Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. I'm Layla, and I want to thank you for joining us. Before we get into the word this morning, let's take a moment and pray. God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for the joy that you've given us, Lord, the good things that we have to enjoy in you, Lord, your beautiful creation. Lord, we thank you for satisfying us with your word, God, filling up those empty spots with you, Lord. We thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ, our partners and our listeners, Lord, and them being able to join us this morning, God. And we ask that you'll minister to each and every one of us our needs, Lord, so that we can become stronger in our faith in you, Lord, and we can grow closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We're glad to have you with us as we continue our study in the book of Ephesians. We're in chapter 2, and we will be discussing the first 13 verses. So I'd like to encourage you now, whether it's your first time joining us or you have joined us for the previous episodes, to just pause the episode and take the time and opportunity to read or reread that section of Scripture just to make things easier to follow along in the discussion. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. And now at this time, we are going to open the floor and give each of you the opportunity to speak and share what Holy Spirit is ministering to you and to ask any questions that you have. So who'd like to begin? I would. All right, La Charles. What the Lord was showing and sharing with me was the um, lower half of, se- of verse 10 where it talks about which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, which he, um, Paul is talking about good works. And the Lord was just reminded me of most times we make excuses for ourselves in our life Meaning that we say, okay, we are created with the sin nature, so it's all but can't be helped that I'm sinning. Mm-hmm. And we give ourselves leeway in that, um, in those situations because we believe we have to. And the Lord was just reminding us through this verse that we weren't created to do that. While sin nature, sin nature came later, that doesn't mean that we have to walk inside of it. Um, and he gave me the example of various things that we have inside of life. Airplanes are not held down by gravity they're still able to fly, even though they weigh a whole bunch. And the same is true inside of our own lives. The Lord gives us the capabilities through his word and through his Holy Spirit not to go by natural laws of, okay, I have to sin because this is what everybody was created with. We have the capability, as I said, through the Holy Spirit to walk inside of what the Lord has for us in every decision and every step. We're supposed to be transformed to Christ. If the Lord did not believe that we're able to do so, he wouldn't have asked us. Um, I'm not sure exactly where it says it, but he says, I ask nothing that, or is it something that you, uh, mommy say? I'm not sure. But you say, I guess it is you guys who say, the Lord would never ask us to do something that he's not willing to do himself. If he doesn't believe that we're capable to do something, he's not going to ask us to do it. He only gives us everything. He gives us all the um, tools needed to complete his will and destiny for our lives. So we can see here, if we're trying to, if the Lord's telling us to be transformed into the image of Christ, we have all the tools and capabilities to do so. And the Lord was perfect. Mm -hmm. Now we don't contain them within ourselves, but they're available to us through Christ Jesus. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is here to help us to succeed in those things and to walk in them. So, the Lord has asked for things that, um, due to sin nature, we're not able to do, right? That's why we needed a savior. If we could have lived perfectly, we would have, but no, it was, it's inevitable that mankind would sin. However, through Christ Jesus, all things become possible to us when we put our faith in him. And really what you're talking about is a sentiment of mindset. Um, the Lord is a, he already knows and always knows the motivations of why we're doing what we're doing and the thoughts and intents of our heart. So, um, we are without excuse. Romans tells us that we're, we're without excuse for intentionally committing sin, no matter, no matter what we're without excuse for that. 
Now, we need the help of the Holy Spirit and we need the blood of Jesus Christ to help us when we do fall, but also to help us navigate so that way we can grow up and mature in the things of God and cease from intentional sin and begin to walk in the fullness and the ways of God and what he desires for us to walk in. So it's possible, not without Christ, but it is possible. And he always meant for us to walk hand in hand with him. That's why in the garden, he came and walked with them in the cool of the day. He instructed them. He gave them understanding of what to do, but he also came alongside them. It wasn't until sin that there was separation. So, um, and the Lord doesn't ask us for things without having prepared a way. So it's not a matter of whether we can do it or not do it per se, but that he's prepared a way for us to connect with whatever he's asked us to do. So that way we could succeed. We'll be able to, um, pursue him. Yes. And the Lord was just showing it and sharing with me that the most, the main reason that we are unable to do so as Christians inside of our lives, because we believe that we have to do it in ourselves mean that we try to be perfect by ourselves of okay i'm not going to do this or that instead of allowing the lord to guide our steps and to direct us on how to do it we see that with jesus jesus wasn't just perfect because he wanted to be he was perfect because he listened to god and the lord is perfect and we see jesus even though he was god he still had to listen to the holy spirit to maintain and walk in the course that he had already set that have been set before him and for his earthly ministry. And the same is true for ourselves in the earth. If we're too busy trying to be perfect of our own means or our own resources, we're never going to get there. And that's one reason we feel like we can't because our humanity is not, is unable, as you said, mommy, to go and do everything that the Lord has for us and attain the spiritual perfection because we're dirt. Mm Mm-hmm. And Jesus is a man. He came into the earth as a man. However, God was his father. God was the one who provided the foundation and structure for him. Mary was simply a vessel, right? Yes. Yes. And we, on the other hand, would be Adam is our our natural father, if you will. Um, So that's why the sin nature is passed on like that. But Jesus, God is his father. That's he, Holy Spirit overshadowed. Mary, right? Yes. So that being said, he is perfect because he's perfect. And he, there was, there's perfection on a variety of levels. Who you are, what you think, what you do, what you say, and are you following the divine order of God? <laughs> Jesus hit every mark and wicket of perfection that was needed and required. Following the scriptures, fulfilling the plan of God doing it right with the right attitude and the right heart and the right mindset and doing it as unto the father and staying the course. So every level of perfection Jesus was able to meet. Yes, because God is his father. And yes, because he chose to do it because as being an equal part of the Godhead, he had a, an ability to make his own choice yet. He did not. He remained submitted to the plan of God, which is what Adam missed in the beginning. He had the right and the ability to make his own choices, but he had an obligation to stay under the divine order set by God, which means obey the commands of God, the father. And he chose not to do that. That's where sin came in. In the beginning, Jesus corrected that he made it right. The -hmm. last Adam got it right, but he did have a choice to go another way because without an opportunity to make a choice, there is no choice. Correct. Yes, Mom. Yes. And yet he resisted to the shedding of blood to stay the course that the father set before him, meaning he sweat great drops of blood. Right? Yes, Mom. Okay. And so he hit something you want I to say. I did, yes. Yeah. So now, as you brought up there, Charles, we are to called, it says in Romans, to be conformed to the image of the Heavenly Father's Son, Jesus the Christ. Yes? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Let's look at the application part. We too have a choice to make. Now, yes, Jesus came and showed us as our pattern example exactly what the Father is looking for and how the Father is glorified. So then what will we do? Because it says here in Ephesians 2, verse 10, as you brought up, God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That's these good works, right? Yes. 
So if I told you where I wanted you to go, a whole nother city or a building, a, a specific place in a whole nother city, maybe not even in this nation, but in some nation halfway around the world, what would you do to get there? Did you just start walking? No. What would you do? Um, probably get a plane if it was halfway across the world. Well, how would you know if you're headed in the right direction? I'll look at a map. Okay. That's a start, right? Yes. Either way, whether you're you're trying to get a plane, right? Now you're depending on someone else to know where that location is, right? Yes. And then when you get to that city or place or whatever, you know, state, nation, province, you're at, you're depending on someone else to give you directions and help you get to the right place, right? Yes. So now there's the of course the the classic thing that we joke between men and women that women are better at asking for directions than men. But either way it comes down to directions. So if the Lord More told us to, to go ask. <laughs> well, yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> willing to ask, right? More willing to ask. But it comes down to this for all of us. Are we willing to ask the Lord for the directions? If he's prepared these good works for us to do, and he says he has, Mm because it says right here, we just read it, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. he has, Not it's not more that, I know I said if. Since. Since he has, yes, Mm -hmm. thank you. Since he has prepared these good works for us to do, shouldn't we be asking him what the good works are that he has for us to do? So we can come in line or alignment with the plan mm-hmm. that he has. Don't we see this throughout Christ's entire ministry here on earth? Mm-hmm. Yes. He says very plainly, I would not have even come to you unless my father sent me. But then he says, I don't say anything unless the father says that. I don't do anything unless I see my father doing it. And it's something we say very often in our house and in this ministry because that's the pattern example set forth for us in Christ. So we should learn from it. If we want to do like works or as Jesus said it, greater works than these you will do. Well, how do we do that unless we do it his way? But he's already prepared them for us to do. So we have to Get the instructions, receive the instructions, the direction, the guidance, just like Jesus did, which came through Holy Spirit. It's no different for us. There's much for us to learn, but we have to be A, willing Mm -hmm. to do it that way. And then two or B, we have to make the choice that that's the only way we're going to live. Amen. And, you know, in the example that you showed with Charles, initially I was thinking, well, I hope you would have asked the Lord how he wanted you to get there. Amen. Instead of making natural assumptions and, I mean, circling the globe. And he was like, I just wanted you to, you know, I had a taxi waiting and the person I had already spoken to the driver or whatever it was. I hope you would have asked him for the instructions before you left because he knows the path. And if he destined good works, he also destined a a, a what He's a when, prepared a where, everything that's a needed. how, and what else? He's 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 already prepared all of those things, and he's waiting for us to ask for that information. Um, if we want to walk off in, in an assumption, in most cases, if we fail to ask, Holy Spirit will just be quiet until we're ready to come back and humble ourselves and get the information and be and, willing to have the conversation. Amen. But asking Him, you know, in in your response, and I'm not finding fault with you. I'm just bringing up a, a how humans tend to think about God's ways and principles. In your example, you were willing to ask a stranger for directions. He doesn't know where you're going. He doesn't know what God has in mind for you, but Holy Spirit does. So asking Holy Spirit for those directions and those instructions. Who Before do you, we do anything. What do you want me to do, Lord? You know, and not in a way of you better tell me everything or I'm not taking a step. Not Nothing in mistrust, but when the Holy Spirit goes, go to this place, you know, like when he sent Samuel to anoint David as king. Samuel didn't just grab a bucket of oil and take off. He said, wait, if Saul knows that I'm going, he's going to say, he's going to try to kill me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and he conversed with God to get counsel. What about Ananias with Saul? Exactly. Conversing with God, 
to get the instruction and get the rest of the counsel. Because if Samuel had took off without having further conversation, Saul would have been hot on his heels. And then the Lord would have been having to deliver Samuel from being from being killed. Right. Yes. yes. And he didn't need to go take a poll of the elders and go, what do you think about this? This is what God said to me. What do you think he means? It means no, he conversed with the source. He went straight to the horse's mouth, if you will. He went straight to the one who has the answer, has the provision, has the instruction to get all that was necessary. And then he kept his ear to the Lord as he went for further guidance, right? When he got there, he was thinking, oh, this is the guy, right? But he had his ear open to hear that's not him because he didn't have a name or a face. He just knew it was the the next king was in this household. Likewise, Ananias had more information, Saul. Um, to converse with God about, he had a name, but he needed some clarification, right? So that he could go in confidence and faith and accuracy to complete and carry out the work God wanted him to carry out. But ask the Lord, ask the Lord. Jesus didn't just take off and go, I'm God. I know. Ooh. And, you know, book it down the road and, and forsake the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm God just like you are, right? I don't need your help. The Messiah didn't act that way. So then for us to take any other approach is ignorant on our behalf and it's unwise and on the border of prideful. While it may not be intentional pride, it is what it is, right? Yes. Yes, And we may not think, oh, I didn't know I'm not doing that on purpose. It doesn't matter. We still have an obligation to come up to God's way of doing and being so that he has an opportunity to carry out his work in the earth through us the way he desires to, not constantly having to work around um, unnecessary limitations when we can just learn better so we can do better just and that's just personal accountability before the lord i know that sounds kind of rough this morning good morning i love you um but it's just the <laughs> truth and if we don't in all our lives right we're to, we're told to examine ourselves and if we would judge ourselves or examine ourselves rightly we would have no need for anyone else to judge or examine us amen and the lord wants us to mature If you look through the way he talked to his disciples, eventually he started to go, you still don't understand. How is this possible? And he wasn't going, oh, you cute little baby. (laughs) It wasn't tickle, tickle, tickle. It wasn't. It was like, why don't you understand this yet? Why aren't you maturing to become more like me? Why are you still laying in the cradle with the binky in your mouth and looking to get your diaper changed when I'm, I'm asking you to stand beside me and put your feet in my footsteps so you can walk in my ways and be a, a man that measures up to the stature of the measure of Jesus Christ or a woman. Grow up. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. You guys have these smiles on your faces. Go ahead, promise. Um, and let Charles add, and as everybody has been speaking, thus far the Lord wants us to grow up in the the Lord, and the Lord brought me to verse 13, and it says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Mm-hmm. And how a lot of Christians think that the Lord's supposed to be doing the evangelizing himself and that the Lord's supposed to be doing all the work. But we also have to realize that we also have a part to play in that. Mm-hmm. And the Lord brought me to Romans ten fourteen through um, 15. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Mm-hmm. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. And you can see here that God wants us to be able to go outside the world and not have to, Mommy, as you said, um, practically be inside of a nursery. <laughs> well, it's important for us to grow up inside of the Lord and mature in Him. Mm-hmm. Maturing also comes with going out into the world. And mm-hmm. Lord remind me of if you're cooking something and you need salt um the lord brought up salt inside of um the gospels mm-hmm. but if the sauce just inside the canister not do, going out into the food then it's useless amen not, the food's not <laughs> being made any better because the f- salt is all in one place mm-hmm. and the salt itself is not any better as a result as in there's not an opportunity for more salt to come in or for the salt to fulfill its purpose, which is seasoning the food or, you know, whatever it's being used for. Mm-hmm. Amen. 
we're, we're about out of time for today. So let's go ahead and close in prayer. and We'll pick this up in the next episode. Well, I'll pray. Okay. Thank you. Promise. Well, I just thank for today. I just thank you for giving us the opportunity, the ability to fellowship inside of you, Lord, and that you bless us continually, Lord, with this ability, Lord. Mm-hmm. And Lord, I just thank you for preserving us in whatever we do, Lord, and all that you ask us to do, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. In Jesus' amen. name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on Connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says Subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.